All right, guys, welcome to Flav Oriana's Anime Show. I'm your host, Flav Oriana, with a little guest host over here by Tittery Oriana. Um, look, guys, wanted to talk about UFC Vegas 83. Originally, it was supposed to be on, um, what's it called, in Shanghai, but UFC ended up uh, pulling the plug out of that, and uh, we are now, well, we finished having... USC Vegas 83. So we're one one more Apex card closer to the infamous UFC 100. UFC Vegas 100. All right. Um, look, guys. So UFC Vegas 83 was headlined by Song Yudong versus Chris Gutierrez. Um, I will get to that in a minute. Um, the call main event. Anthony Smith versus uh, Khalil Groundtree Jr., which that was a great fight. Uh, we also had Sim Elliott versus uh, Sumadurji. We had Nasrat Hack Barras versus uh, Jimmy Malarkey. Uh, we had Tessoro Tyra all right, against Carlos Hernandez, which was a good fight. Um, Tessoro Tyra comes up as the winner as usual because he is 5 0 in the UFC now. Um, had him by submission uh, as a prop bet, but um, he ended up coming out round two um, by TKO. And, you know, that was. Really good stuff by him. I mean, kid really is, you know, being slow rolled, but I, I like the direction that they're going with Tessoro Tyra. Um, but we'll start it off. I mean, we're going to start it off this time instead of the, the main event. We're going to go with the co main event. All right. And I really wanted to get onto this because of the fact that I feel like the co main event really stole the headlines for USC Vegas 83. It wasn't a bad card, it was actually a pretty good card, in, in my opinion. From an apex standpoint, but one of the nuggets that I had an issue with is main car started at 10 p.m. You know, that's you. I usually will feel okay if if something does start that late, if it's a pay per view or if it's a really good car that's on on the road. Um, give or take, if it's you know, let's say if they wanted to do like you know UFC New Jersey or whatever, right? And they wanted to have, you know, you know, Benio Darius versus, you know, Rafael Faziv, right? I'm just putting that out there. And then you have a co main event of, you know, I don't know, you, you can you can put, you know, like Dan Ige, Max Holloway, right? I'll just put that out there, right? You know, if, if it starts at 10 o'clock for a fight like that, a car that has a, a solid one two punch, you know, no problem. But this is an apex fight. And sometimes, you know, you just don't want to be staying up that late, you know, for on watching a fight. But anyways, the co main event, uh, Anthony Smith fills in, um, I think it was uh, um, Amazdov. I can't pronounce his last name. He had to pull out of the fight, and he ended up fighting. Um, well, he had to pull out of the fight, and then Anthony Smith got, got a short notice, you know, fight against Khalil Roundtree. And Khalil Roundtree is the real deal. He is one of those guys that I do feel that, you know, can really make the light heavyweight division fun. And we have a really good, you know, champion in Alex Pereira who won the belt, right, against Yuri Prohashka, who is a fun fighter, in my opinion. And um, Alex Pereira just did the damn thing, right? And, you know, it it is crazy, right, to see that, the the way that the UFC was strictly at one point jiu-jitsu fighters now and, and then it shifted to wrestlers now you see a lot a lot of like Muay Thai kick uh, kickboxers now I, th I think you want to get down right all right hold on let's try to get you down okay okay sorry he just does too much but that's what we get with uh, Khalil Roundtree Khalil Roundtree um, Muay Thai fighter Facing, you know, the... Alright, Terry, you can't do that. Ugh. You know, facing Anthony Smith, who is a very good jiu-jitsu fighter. And Anthony Smith, I felt like, what's it called? He has the experience. Him coming into this this type of a matchup against Claire Browntree, I felt like experience, you know, definitely was in favor for um, Smith. But I pick Khalil Roundtree. I pick Khalil Roundtree by by Naka because this guy hits like a truck. If you guys haven't seen his fight against Carl Roberson, check that out. All right, especially the way that he ended up soccer kicking him in the gut. All right, 
that I was nervous about because I really thought that he wasn't a, a Khalil was gonna kick him in the face, right? I'm like, no, you can't do that. But you know, he knew exactly what he was doing. Um, but yeah, Khalil Roundtree round one. It was a competitive round one. You know, Anthony Smith was holding his own. Khalil didn't have a high um output. You know, compa- um normally than I think that he would have. Right, but he was landing the harder punches. He was really making it uncomfortable for Anthony Smith. Same thing in round two. Anthony Smith, he um, you know, what's it called? Guy hit with the cleaner punches. You know, some of these punches went through his guard. All right, as he was, you know, trying to protect himself, and it really kind of like messed with him. And I felt like you know, Anthony just didn't want to get too close. You know, and having to deal with the consequences of the of the power that comes with one clear roundtree. And I felt that was a quote in round three. I was like, if Anthony Smith can take Khalil down, which that was the biggest if, because one takedown, it could possibly end the fight. And the reason why I say that is because Anthony Smith can really finagle his way into a submission. And, um, you know, that's his world right there. And we don't know if Khalil can handle himself because on, on the feet, very few people can you know stand toe to toe with him maybe I, I would say Alex Pereira is one of them inside the division but then the other one I mean I don't know I would say maybe Yuri maybe you know Jan Bohovic. um you know you have so many different angles um so many different fighters you know at that top um top five Jamal Hill that's what I was interested you know as this fight was progressing I was like Khalil's winning round, round one and two um Anthony Smith you know he's still game in, in, in this fight. Comes out round round three. I think it didn't even last more than a minute. You know Khalil ends up hitting him with just these heavy punches. You know, and throws the uppercut. I think it was I think he with, with the right hand goes through the guard, hurts him. I never seen Anthony Smith get this hurt in his career. Maybe he's starting to get you know punch drunk, um, but. He starts collapsing, you know, backpedaling a little bit, right? And then collapse. And then Khalil Roundtree just walks over, has his fist out and above, you know. And Mark Smith is just looking, right? And he's looking at Mark Smith. And he's waiting to see if this fight's going to get called off or not. And Mark Smith is like, no, we can't go any further with this. You know, fights off. Khalil wins by knockout. Because, wow. Because if Khalil would have hit him one more time, who knows what what damage that would have done. Um, Khalil is now on a five-fight winning streak on the post-fight interview. He ended up calling out Alex Pereira, and I was very excited about that because nobody in their right mind would ever say no to that matchup. The, the problem is is that um, come today, I, be, I, be, I haven't checked the, the, the rankings, right? But Khalil Roundtree might be ranked number eight, right? You know, or seven, you know, depending on how, you know, the panel ended up ranking him. And it makes me wonder, it was like, Jamal, Alex Ferrer does not want to wait around up up until the third quarter of uh, 2024, right? Or whatever, summer of 2024. He wants to get in there and he wants to be able to fight, you know, as soon as possible. And what better matchup that he can have than, you know, having it against a Khalil Roundtree Jr., all right? Because... Jan Bohovic had to pull out against his fight against um, Alexander Rakic, which is happening next month in Toronto. All right. Two, all right. He just beat Yer Prohashka. Three, I just mentioned that the fact that he, he doesn't want to see, uh, wait around for um, Jamal Hill. All right. Because he's trying to recover from that Achilles um, injury. I mean, unless he's going to have some type of Aaron Rodgers recovery, set, um, you know, you know, what's it called? Uh, rehab. Then what's it called? I can say, all right, maybe this fight's going to happen a lot sooner, but it clearly is not. Four, there is no way, what's it called, Magomed Ankalaev is going to get a title shot um, if he defeats Johnny Walker um, come the first card of the of the year. So the only other possibility is if Johnny Walker wins, I can see the UFC catapulting him into fighting um, Alex Pereira. If not, then I can definitely see this outcome happening. Khalil fights one more time. Maybe he, he takes the spot to fight uh, Alexander Rakic in January in Serrano since he really didn't absorb any you know real danger and dangerous shots in his fight against Anthony Smith. He takes that fight, beats Rakic, 
then now you can accelerate him into what's it called the area of possibly main eventing you know a pay-per-view all right against one alex Pereira. but right now we just don't know because one, one of the bad things about, about the the ufc booking is they haven't really done much on trying to put Khalil Roundtree out there. A lot of his fights are inside the Apex. Many people are not really tuning in to a lot to these Apex cards, and then nonetheless, it's very limited capacity inside of these type of fights. Um, you're you're seeing about maybe about like 75 people, 50 people, um, you know, inside that um that Apex Center, right? Watching these fights. You know, you put him in front of a live crowd. You know, it doesn't have. It, it, I mean, it could be the opener of a pay per view card. It could be on a a co-main event on a fight night card or whatever. You will have fans, you know, more intrigued and glued onto you know the way that he fights. I'm very interested to see how this is gonna pan out. I hope, in my opinion, I really do hope that he ends up fighting Alexander Alexander Rakage on next month's um what's it called, a uh, pay-per-view card in Toronto, just because now the fans can see who he is and stuff like that, and the UFC can invest into him, and then they can work their way into having a fight between Alex Pereira versus um, Khalil Roundtree Jr., and nobody will say no to that. Um, main event was Sonia Dunga versus, versus Chris Gutierrez. I think, uh, think that was a fight that I'm probably not going to watch ever in my life because... As much as the first two rounds were a little bit intriguing, just didn't see myself wanting to watch that again. Mainly due to the fact that the bad IQ by Chris Gutierrez, and I and I like Chris Gutierrez, you know, but you being down four rounds going into the fifth round, and what you do is the Imanari roll. That's bad IQ, my guy. What are you doing? Why are you trying to do an Imanari roll, knowing that? Song Yudong is the the better um sorry knowing that Song Yudong is the better athlete right and he was able to pin you down so I really do believe what's it called the perform I mean Song got the win which was important right but I do believe what's it called he needed to get like something of a flashier um you know finish he needed to get a finisher or of that nature and he couldn't get that done mainly because you know, Song ended up wrestling. Song, what's it called? Didn't want to stand around and get leg kicked to death by Chris Gutierrez, which I tr- truly don't understand. You know, nobody wants to take that. And the whole idea is getting those two paychecks, and which he did. Um, there was talks about you know him fighting Piotr Jan originally in Shanghai. None of those uh, rumors became ever be ever became true. They didn't ever even spoke. No contract was written up for it. Uh, Piotr Jan wasn't really impressed, you know, because I guess the wrestling and everything like that. So I'm interested to see what song, what's next for song. I really would like to see him fight Dominic Cruz, and I feel like that should be the the next fight for him. I don't think he gets a Piotr Jan fight. I think Davis Figueredo actually gets that more than anybody else, just because of his impressive performance against uh, Rob Font. So we'll see what happens. And then lastly, I wanted to talk about Anthony Smith. If he would have gotten that that win over Cleo Roundtree, with the way that the light heavyweight division is at the, in this very you know juncture, I'm pretty sure he would have at least he would have gotten an immediate title shot. I'm pretty sure of that, and I just feel that you know he fumbled the bag. He all he had to do was just take down Cleo Roundtree. Never really had an oppor- He never gave himself that opportunity to do so. He just got hit really hard against one of the most hard-hitting, you know, punchers inside the division and got knocked out. What's next for Smith? I have no idea. I wouldn't even be surprised if he, if he retires. If he retires, that might actually be a good thing, you know, for his long-term health. But, you know, that's just something to uh, keep in mind. But, yeah, Khalil Roundtree solo show. Might get a title shot in his next fight. Might be in a title eliminator. You know, who knows? But he's on the right track. Anthony Smith won't be surprised if he just announces it and says that he's calling it a quits. And we'll see how things go on from there. And then uh, Song Yudong, it's not, not getting the Piotr fight, I could tell you that. 
and uh, Chris Gutierrez. That may have been the, the one and only time he's in the main event just because he also, too, ruined his opportunity of showcasing himself why he should be a true main eventer. Until then, guys, I am Flav Oriana. And thank you for, for listening in on uh, Flav Oriana's MMA show. Um, I'm going to be out of here because this one over here, he wants to go outside and use the bathroom. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.